What would you say is one of the greatest lessons you've learned from Herbie? Uh, he he he's taught me that you could you could find beauty within every problem. I love that. You could find beauty within every problem. One more time, you could find beauty within every problem, and and what that means just to get a light example. Um, got to give these examples. Of course, uh, a, a a light example is if you you know you you going out for audition for a gig. This is light. It's a bigger examples I could give, but this is for musicians. Uh, you know, you you get in the car, maybe MD in this gig, or maybe on this gig, you know, you ain't got no rent, you ain't got none of this, you ain't you, you broke. This you spent your last getting to this art or whatever the case is, you you have no money, you don't feel believed in, and you feel like something is tangible right there that could help you in your life. It's just right there, but then you don't get it. You don't get it. For me, for years, the beauty within those was I I remember me going out on auditions. Or a, uh, to be a main keyboard player with a group back in the day called 98 Degrees. Yep. And this is before I, I understand about the bullshit that L.A. does with with, with with these audition calls. And the guys already know that they they who's going to use in the band. But the labels back then was paying musical directors to have these calls so they could validate where some money's going. So I was one of those kids that believed it was one of these real things in Los Angeles. And... Um, I uh I, I got a call from Bruce Sterling. That was his name, Bruce Sterling. He was a contractor around LA. Got a lot of people some gigs. And did a lot of fuck shit too. Bruce Sterling. And uh uh made you know, went through all these loops to get the audition. He said, Here's the C D. It's two thirty. The audition is at four PM at Third Encore. The office was in Beverly Hills. I borrowed my friend's car. I had, I got to learn the music. So I said, how am I supposed to learn it? I don't know. Figure it out. All right. Took it to my auntie's house. Drove it an hour over the hill to North Hollywood because she had a keyboard. L- learned the music, all the music. It's 98 degrees. I mean, shit. God bless him, but the music wasn't shit. Not Herbie Hancock. The, I mean, the, it, <laughs> the, 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 the music wasn't good music anyway. Right, right. It just wasn't good. I, yeah. I needed a gig, you know. Yeah, for sure. They probably felt me. They probably felt that. <laughs> but but I, I mean, I learned the music, you know. It was all these guys there. I never, uh, they had, uh, who you know who was there? Um, a, 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 a Los Angeles giant, an innovator on bass named Cornelius Mims. A giant played with Brandy, Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg. It's two giants on base from Los Angeles: Andrew Goucher and Cornelius Mims. These are the godfathers of like South Central LA bass playing. Everybody want to play like them to this day. You can't play the Snoop Dogg gig without trying to sound like Cornelius Mims. Period. So Cornelius Mims, there, and I was like, oh man, that's Cornelius Mims. And I was playing. He was like, yeah, he was very, he was nice. But I remember I did all that. Spent my last thirty bucks getting my friend gas. She had a classic 62 Cadillac so gas was crazy and I went there to audition it was like 50 keyboard players and, and I didn't get the gig yeah. you know so first I was so depressed man that that whole ride home like fuck what am I gonna do I just had a kid young I got no place I'm in my mom's couch I learned all the music I played the, I played just as good as those guys you know Actually, I wiped the motherfuckers out at playing that shit. I played the same old triads, the expression, all the shit, the right sounds. I played, why didn't I get that job? They said if I'm good and I did it right, I'll get the job. Well, that was the time I learned, hey, it's not about how good you are. Now, being good helps you get there. But getting a gig and keeping is based on personality and trust. Second, I realized, wow. Fuck that. I'm never going out for that bullshit ever again in my fucking life. I'm never going to play behind no fucking corny ass pop group and be treated like that. I'm not going to practice all these hours and be treated so bad. That was, they hurt my spirit. I was, I cried. Mm. I said, I'm never going to do another fucking audition again with those kind of people. Right. And be very specific. I know for a fact, I, back then I was doing eight to nine hours a day practicing, learning different kind of music, loving and just giving these guys were giggers, like, I'm going to get the gig. Yeah, I will kill you for this gig. And I was coming from a place like, yo, we could all play together. Yeah, and yeah. I said, I'm not going to surround myself with that because, for one, these guys are all mean and can't none of them play. Really. They all suck. And they're mean and suck. That's miserable for them. So I'm not going to do that no more because I don't. we don't even joke the same, bro. Right? But I'm not going to audition no more because I don't like the way that feels. So instead of me pouting, 
let me take my production up a level and start making the records that they got to audition to play. And let me play the parts on the record where they got to have guys like me. They got to have guys that put in that time. They got to have guys that's devoted to really wanting to give a fuck about the music first. They got to have weird, introvert, non-social, probably don't dress the same as you kind of guys. Let me build a universe to where no more fuck boys can control that shit. And let me get all the guys that they kick out these situations. So that's when I went and got Ronald Bruner and come on. <laughs> <laughs> everybody else. The Steven Bruner, you know, uh, Steven Bruner, <laughs> Ryan Porter, Brian Warfield, Marlon Williams, Robert Spud Seawright, Keon Harrell, Ben Wendell, JJ on bass, Monty Noble. Snoop always allowed me to get with these guys and and give them a gig and or, or how or he he would hire somebody like Terrence how you like them they so different because I would knew they was counted out of other circles not everybody not Monty Nuba was never counted out of any circle that's just first of all that's like my I love him that that's my big bro he's a genius um, but everybody else you know I remember you know Spud was coming out of Dallas you know he was doing all the gospel albums but that's all he was doing in Dallas. You know, uh, yeah. God's property, which was a big deal. But at, after that, we was floating around. Spud came out here and made a way. Because Spud gave me superpowers when he came to L.A. So we just, you know, but I started getting the guys that I felt were just bad motherfuckers that may have been outed by other crews that couldn't acknowledge that level of musicianship. Because I was born and raised by a crew of bad motherfuckers that was outed by people, too. And what I didn't want to do was get a crew of guys that fell into what people call the Los Angeles Hollywood thing because you dress away or you're on a certain gig that you're cool with everybody. Mm -hmm. I want to get the cast that know his raw ability without any superstar next to him will fuck you up and you'll want to dress like him and be like him. I wanted to get cast like that. I wanted to get all leaders so we couldn't have no egos. 